Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be looking through a few different electrical schematics that I have. Now I've been noticing in some comments recently that people have been asking for schematics of my different inventions. So I've got a few piles of schematics here today. I've got a pile of schematics that I was using when I was designing my vacuum tube amplifier. I have quite a few versions of this schematic. Uh, I also have some other schematics from various assorted projects that I've done in the past. And finally, I have this really funny pile of schematics of stuff I designed when I was younger, much younger. So let's start with some contemporary schematics. This one was for my DIY frequency counter that I put on EEV Blog's channel. This was from a live stream where I made um, an H bridge driver. So this is the bootstrap H bridge driver right here. And here's an example of what an H bridge looks like. This is something interesting. This was actually for a reverb device, a reverb guitar pedal that I tried building but actually never got it to work. This is that failed reverb experiment. It looks pretty cool, but it never worked and I may eventually work on this later, but at the time being, uh, it's not very important. This is pretty cool. This is my first schematic for my first ever Christmas light control system with the Arduino and the relays. That was pretty cool. This is my incandescent light flasher from my flashing light prize of 2017. This is pretty cool. I've got my vacuum tube, diode, everything else. This schematic is for my capacitor bank. So we've got the dual transistor oscillator feeding into a trans, uh, transformer and that charges capacitors to like 400 volts or something. Got this. This is one of my flyback drivers. This is a 555 flyback driver. We also have this Geiger counter circuit. This was my original Geiger counter circuit, uh, for the power supply at least. Um, this wasn't well designed. The power supply was well designed. The final output stage wasn't as well designed as I thought. Uh, the Geiger tube and the piezo element didn't work as well. But still, it's a pretty cool schematic and it uses a very good um, driver system to drive the transformer to create a high voltage. Got this. This is the original Tanner Tech logo. This is a tube circuit. This is actually my VFD amplifier circuit. I, I made a device with VFDs or vacuum fluorescent displays, and this is what the circuit inside it was. You got the two VFD vacuum tubes, uh, all the power transformers, all the resistors, everything else for that circuit. We got a coil gun. I made the coil gun a while back. Uh, this coil gun it has a 555 uh, timer circuit with two NPN and PNP transistors to drive a transformer and that charges some capacitors that can be released via this silicon controlled rectifier into a coil of turns. Finally we have this. This is for my first floppy piano, and it's how you conduct the Arduino to the different pins of the floppy drive. Now I'll have all these schematics inside a uh, folder that I'll put a link to in the description so that way you can see all my schematics. I'll also put some schematics that I've actually drawn online there too. Next we'll take a look at some iterations of the Tanner Tech Tube Super Amp or a series of vacuum tube amplifiers that I've built over the past three years just testing to see which one works the best. I have quite a few designs right here. I think this one is actually my final design um, with all the with all the power supplies and all the amplifiers and stuff. It works pretty well. I've got a few different designs. With almost every design, I change some different values. This one is just a copy. That's actually a design of the, of the power supply. It's a, a new version. I have some another design of the power supply for the vacuum tube using actually a rectifier tube, but I eventually replaced that with a diode because the diode's more efficient and the rectifier tube didn't work as well. Here's another copy of that original schematic. And here is my first ever vacuum tube schematic. Um, this one didn't work very well at all. In fact, this one I think worked the best out of all of them. Uh, it has all the right resistor values after a long time of calculation. So that is my pile of vacuum tube schematics and I will put these schematics in a folder too so that way you can see what they look like and use them. Last but not least, we'll take a look at some of these funny schematics that I made when I was much younger. This schematic is actually designed for a plane that I wanted to build where you pedaled it. I know this isn't practical at all, but in the mind of uh, a 12 year old, it was a pretty good idea. We've got this thing. This whole mess of wires is an attempt at an electrical schematic at me making a, a claw machine where you could have all these motors that would move a claw to grab stuff with all these buttons and I think I wired it so that way you could reverse all the motors and stuff. 
It's not a very well designed schematic, but I mean, it may work. I never built it. This one I actually made, it was a pool cleaner robot. Surprisingly, this one actually works very well. It got destroyed a long time ago before I could take any pictures or videos of it. But anyway, how it worked is you had this floating thing and it had propellers on it and it had sprinkler filters on it. It drove through the pool and cleaned up junk and it was supposed to drive and hit the walls and turn around and it did turn around and hit the walls, but it didn't really clean up much. And after water got into the battery, it didn't work anymore. Well, let's take a look at some other ones. This is a magnetic claw machine. I actually made this. As you can see, this was made in 2011 when I was 11. That's uh, pretty cool. This claw machine actually did work pretty well. It had a lot of batteries, a lot of wires, a lot of switches. It took me a long time to make, but when you moved the switches, you could actually lift up the magnet and it would turn on. This was actually one of my first really cool inventions. I made this in fifth grade. It was a, a TV that used a light and a crank to actually play a video. And this thing worked well too. Now you may be wondering why I have like 10 or 15 schematics inside here for this device and how I have 186 videos. And I've made a lot more projects than you see right here. And that's just because a lot of my schematics have been lost or I kind of designed the circuit in my head while I was making it and never really wrote it down. But yeah, I'll upload some of the schematics that I do have into a folder in Google Drive and share it on my description. Now, it may not exactly be Google Drive that I'll be uploading all these photos to, but I will for sure be uploading those pictures of those schematics to some kind of photo sharing website, and I'll put a link in the description. I will continuously update that website with new schematics of new projects that I make, so that way people don't keep asking in the comments, where's your schematic? Because there'll be a place to find all of them. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.